it looks like being really fucking uncomfortable. And it's forbidden to be uncomfortable in post-modernity. You have to be nice. You can't give anybody any feedback. You can't tell the truth. You have to lie. You have to avoid negative feelings at all costs. Those all kill any real shadow work. You have to be willing not only to dive into the darkest darkness, but be really uncomfortable and see all the hideous aspects of yourself. That's the simple answer. We're going to have to do some serious shadow work as a culture to survive. All of these images were, were designed in a way to evoke feelings and emotions. So the, the dark cloud itself is just that. It came from my own feeling and emotions of observing and feeling myself and feeling that in others. Mm -hmm. And it's almost this, this rot, this putrefication mm -hmm. of inner repression, of disowning the shadow, mm -hmm. disowning that which is deformed and doesn't work, which really is crying out to be untangled mm -hmm. and, and brought to light so that health vitality and life can truly flow through mm. and create higher order. Part of spiritual development is to recognize the satanic tendencies that characterize you and to fully wrestle with them and to and to integrate them. That's the thing. It's, it's not so much to cast them away. It's to transmute them. You know, and you can see the difference between people who've done that and people who haven't, at least to some degree, because People who haven't integrated the shadow at all are naive. And because they're naive, they're often resentful as well because they get taken advantage of. And someone who's integrated that more, they're dangerous in, in the martial arts sort of way, which is they're dangerous, but they don't have to be, they don't have to use it. We've, we've been living in the valley. Right? We've had a situation where the, the drought has come and we need to leave. Well, how we deal with that is first and foremost, we drop the parts of us that wants to stay where we are. We allow the sadness of change to occur and we process that. We feel something bad has occurred. Danger has just emerged for sure. Like leaving the, the old fertile valley and migrating across the desert is fraught with danger and some of us may not make it. But at the same time, it activates in us as well the call to consciousness, the call to gather together, the call to begin to actually become thinking in a group. Shining light on things and integrating them can be very uncomfortable. And so um, the shadow is really helps us evolve. It asks of us to constantly reorganize at a higher level. And when we do so, I feel the unconsciousness just catches up or the shadow that's created matches the new light. And that interplay can be really beautiful. However, we are in a way wired biologically and mentally to avoid discomfort and avoid pain. But it's only in this honest, conscious suffering, if you want to say, which is very heroic, of going into shadow, understanding it, integrating it, do we really evolve. The spirit, so to speak, the psyche, if you want, flees from the body in terror because the body is the place of mortality and suffering. And so people are disembodied and it's because, what, one way of looking at it is because they're too afraid to become fully embodied. And it's no wonder they're afraid. There's a reason to be afraid. But the question is, well, what would you be like if you had the courage to be fully embodied? And that's fully incarnate. That's another way of thinking about that. And the idea, the Christian idea, is that the fully incarnate human being is the Messiah. That's the idea. That's a hell of an idea. You know, but it means embracing the horrors of the world. That's what it means.